And so we set up an experiment with them. And that's a video which I can now show you. If you look at the modern world, despite all discouragement, most people believe that they've had telepathic experiences. And interestingly, the most common kind of telepathy in the modern world is precisely one that's grown up alongside technologies. In other words, telepathy connected with telephone calls. So many people tell stories of telephone telepathy that Dr. Sheldrake devised a test to see whether someone could predict who, out of four people, was calling them. The probability of being correct by guesswork alone was 25%. We've now completed a thousand of these trials, and the average success rate is 42%, which is hugely significant statistically. People certainly aren't right every time, um, but it's way above what you'd expect by chance. So, is telephone telepathy real, or is it just a figment of the imagination? We brought one of the most successful girl bands of the 80s to London to find out. The Nolan sisters are one of the closest families in showbiz. At the height of their fame, they spent months on the road together, and most of them still live within miles of each other. I'm Rupert Sheldon. But how well will they do in the telephone telepathy test? Now, could you tell me all your names in order, please? <laughs> yes. yes. I'm Denise Nolan. I'm the most intelligent one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maureen. She's just Maureen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda, and Denise is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Colleen. Colleen is the youngest, and I'm Anne. I'm the eldest. Why do you say that? Because I want to say I look good for me. Maybe you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> The first stage of the experiment is to decide which of the sisters will be the receiver. So four of you are going to stay here. One of you is going to go to the hotel and try and guess which of the others is phoning. So we've got to pick the person to do that. It's got to be Colleen. Colleen is nominated by her sisters because she's the youngest. And while she's driven a mile away to the other location, Dr Sheldrake allocates each of the other sisters a number between one and four. For each trial, a throw of the dice will determine who will be the caller. So we're going to start now with the first one. I'm going to throw the die. Two. There you are, Maureen. So you've only got two minutes. Maureen's first up, and the rest of the group must leave the room to allow her to focus. Let's let me think about her. When the phone rings, Colleen will have to say who she thinks is calling before she picks up. <gasps> right. Maureen. Maureen. Yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Thank God for that. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely talking to you. Bye. Bye. I need you get it. Yes! Bloody hell. Sure. But that could just be coincidence. Next up is Anne, the only sceptic among the sisters. Denise. No, you're wrong. With four sisters to choose from, if it's purely guesswork, Colleen should expect to be right 25% of the time by the end of the experiment. Think of your favourite sister. The most talented one. I'm not getting anything now. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. Linda. Linda. Yes! 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 <laughs> Good girl! <laughs> You're not sick. Oh, thank you. Oh, bye Thanks bye. Thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. Yes! Halfway through, and Colleen is a long way ahead of the 25% expected by chance alone. Anne's number has come up four times, but for the previous three, Colleen has guessed wrong. Anne. Anne. Yes! Hooray! I knew you loved 
me really. Three quarters of the way through, and Colleen's hit rate has reached over 40%. According to Dr Sheldrake, this indicates there's more going on than simple guesswork. More or Linda, I think. Linda. Linda. Yes! 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 Oh, my God! I'm so impressed. I'm scaring them now. They're backing out the room. They should never have gone in there with you, love. <gasps> Fantastic. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Colleen's final score is 50%, one of the highest of over 1,000 tests conducted by Dr. Sheldrake. Anyway, well done. I think that was great. Thank you. Thanks yeah, very much. I enjoyed it. Well done, that girl. Oh, cheers. cheers! Don't block my face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I summarise the um, telephone telepathy tests in the sense of being stared at. Those of you who are interested in the technical details, they're all in papers published in journals. Um, and the full texts are on my website. So if you do want to look at the exact details of the statistics, procedure, etc., that's easy to do. The latest development of telepathy is the email telepathy. Uh, many people find the same thing happens with emails. You think about someone, then you get an email from them. Now, I've done a series of 600 email telepathy studies which have shown uh, a very similar effect to telephone telepathy, massively significant results. Um, and um, these are even cheaper and simpler to do than the telephone telepathy tests. Um, um, I've just written a paper on those. In fact, I posted it just this evening to the journal I'm submitting it to. Um, so this is the kind of state of the art. The latest development, in fact, is online uh, telepathy experiments on my website, which is www.sheldrake.org, O-R-G. Um, I have an online telepathy test that you can do with your friends and family and find out how telepathic you are. Um, you could do 10 tests in less than 15 minutes, so it doesn't take long. You have to have the people online at the same time. I'm very keen to get results from this now to know how well it works, so do please have a go if you possibly can. People who score well in this test uh, then take part in further tests if they're able to do so, for which they get paid handsomely. So <laughs> this can be a nice little earner if you've uh, got any telepathic talents. Um, and we're not looking for superstars, just sort of, uh, you know, moderate degrees of telepathy are fine on this test. So do have a go, and it's fun to do, it's free, um, and... Um, it's, it's, it's quite easy. Um, well, there's a huge amount we still don't know about the nature of the mind. Because of the taboos that operate within the scientific and academic world about these kinds of phenomena, they've been off limits for most scientists. And therefore, uh, we're really at the beginning of this exploration, uh, rather, uh, which is an amazing thing that an entire new field of science is opening up in the 21st century. Um, uh, a great deal we can find out which would tell us a lot more about human nature and about animal nature. Many of the experiments are quite simple. In my book, I give an appendix of simple experiments that people can do themselves at home. Um, some of them make ideal student projects. 